Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. It's going to be a very interesting battle, I feel, between Ryzen 7000 and Intel's 13th generation of processors. But generally speaking, the tech industry at the moment is kind of in a holding pattern, not just because of the new processor releases, but also new graphics cards as well. With that said, I want to kick things off with some interesting benchmarks for Intel's 13th generation processors, and then we're going to move on to some updates for Zen 4, not just the Vcash CPUs, but also some early prices that I've been given. And we're going to get right into it, of course, after this message from the video's sponsor. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Crypto.com. Crypto.com is a centralized exchange where you can buy and sell 250 plus cryptocurrencies with 0% fee crypto trading. They also offer a crypto visa debit card, which allows up to 5% cash back on purchases. And other nice perks like having access to airport lounges, access to Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, and more. As well as all of the buying and selling features where you can buy a true card cost. Crypto.com also offers services like trading and staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. You can also grow your portfolio by receiving rewards up to 14.5% on your crypto assets. Join 50 million plus users buying and selling 250 plus cryptocurrencies using our referral link, crypto.com slash app slash redgamingtech, which you can also find linked in the video description below. So the 13700 as well as the 13600K have been tested by Billy Billy. And actually the results for these upcoming processes is looking to be pretty interesting. And we're going to get into the specifics in a moment, but I can summarize it by stating better performance, but with drastically increased power consumption. As of the time I'm recording this, we still don't have meaningful comparisons between the 13th generation uh, Intel processors and of course Ryzen 7000, not least of which is because, well, we haven't had independent tests sort of uh, T well, tested the performance of either, but also, of course, it's still quite early, and the official re uh, release of these processors is not for a while yet, so we're still kind of waiting. But with that said, these early results for Intel actually are quite promising. You can see on screen yourself comparisons with the 13700 and 13600K being tested against the 12700 as well as the 12600K. Both processors essentially are outfitted with identical memory and other such things. And you can see that the results here are basically relatively impressive. We're looking at between 10 5% increase to up to 40% increase in performance. So for example, in CPU Z, the i7 see about 10% boost in single core, but up to 34% better in multi-threading. Meanwhile, the 13600K is up to a 41% increase when it comes to multi-thread performance. The Snago though, and you knew there was going to be one, is that the power consumption figures go up significantly. For example, we're looking at 244 watts for the 13700K, which is up from 188 watts of the 12700K. So to put that into some level of context, that's around a 60 watt increase. I won't go through all of the numbers here because quite frankly, you can see them quite easily on screen. And I'd also like to give credit to videocars.com, who I think were the first to uncover this. So I'll, of course, I will leave a link in the video description. Bottom line is that with the 13th generation of processors, as everyone knows by now, the big cores, the high performance cores, whatever you want to call them, remain consistent in terms of the count versus the 12th generation, but the energy efficient cores actually have an increased core count, so I think multi-thread results are going to be much better for the 13th uh, generation, for the 13th generation, excuse me, but gaming is probably not going to benefit a whole amount. Um, Again, it does seem like faster memory in particular does benefit the higher core count variants like the 13900, um, which actually matches pretty much some of my earlier information um, and leaks regarding the 13th generation of processors. Basically, DDR4 memory is probably going to be holding the performance back of the higher end 13th generation, but DDR4 is going to be absolutely fine with, you know, lower end i5s and that type of thing. But ultimately, these processors are seemingly very impressive. And now I want to discuss AMD. 
as there have been a lot of info, you know, kind of floating around. Now, I have heard at this stage that a target release date potentially for the uh, Ryzen 7000 series is going to be September 15th. I've mentioned a couple of times now that I've heard early announcements of September. Uh, this actually is also what Grayman, I think, has said a couple of times on uh, Twitter. And I've heard the same thing, but now I've basically heard it's going to be somewhere around the 15th for the launch. So basically speaking, the time between the launch and the actual announcement is going to be around a week or should I say announcement then launch because obviously you don't announce the product after launch unless it's really terrible um, but anyway bottom line is it's not going to be that much longer until these processes finally actually are available what isn't quite yet known is what SKUs are going to be available at what dates. Now again, I'm going to get into the Vcash stuff in just a moment, but I don't want to start darting around between Vcash and vanilla processors because I think it's going to get quite confusing. Now I have received some very early pricing information for Ryzen 7000. However, I want to take this with a grain of salt because, well, basically prices can change quite literally up until the last minute. I mean, I think NVIDIA even admitted in public, actually, that the RTX, I can't remember if it's the 30 or the 20 series, I think it was the 20 series, but I may be wrong on that, quite literally had its price chosen pretty much, you know, before they went live. Obviously, you know, they have to leave a little bit of time because they have to redo the slides and all of that stuff, but ultimately it was a very last minute decision. And with Intel nipping up their heels, especially in the mid-range guys, so I think guys, the mid-range is gonna be really where the interesting marketing lies. Obviously, when it comes to like the 13700, 13900, and this, you know, Ryzen uh, 9, 7950 and stuff like that, you have, people who are going to be using them for high performance usage anyway but when it comes to the mid-range i think it's going to be a lot of interesting wrangling in terms of marketing and also it's going to be very interesting to see how the boards are finally priced there's been a lot of leaks of that but anyway enough of rambling let's get into the price list Again, I want to stress these are quite early, so they could change based upon pressure from Intel, but I'm going to round up and down the figures here for everyone's sanity. But the 7950X is going to be about 800 bucks. 7900 is going to be a 550. The 7800X, it's allegedly going to be 450 US dollars. However, it's possible that this could change significantly, particularly given the 13th generation, which I've just mentioned, so I won't go over that again. The 7700X is going to be 350 US dollars, and the 7600X is going to be 300 bucks. And then you have the 6700G. 280 US dollars, the 7600, 229 US dollars, and finally the 6600G, which is going to be 200 US dollars. Now, again, I want to stress A, not all of these SKUs are going to launch instantaneously. There is going to be some delays, some priorities. I suspect that the Ryzen 9, for example, are going to be some of the processors that AMD will want to get out first. And of course, as always, it's going to fill out its SKUs. I'm not sure what the schedule is, but I do know, and I've mentioned this in multiple leaks before, that the mobile uh, Ryzen's are going to start coming out early next year for Ryzen, for, sorry, for Zen 4. Um, and those are looking to be very impressive. I've discussed, you know, those leaks previously, but bottom line, guys, the clock frequencies are going to be really impressive of that. I have also heard some rumors, and I don't necessarily know how much I believe this. Um, however, don't forget that the recent 230 watt... Um, you know, info that came out with uh, um, Ryzen 7000 could also lend some credibility to what I'm about to say, but I have heard that certain select chips can actually reach 6 gigahertz. However, that is not stonks. That is like PBO and probably tweaking from the user. Um, so that is not like I have got, you know, the world's crappiest cooler. I live in the middle of the desert and, you know, everything's good you know, with the worst quality silicon, we're talking really high quality silicon with PBO, you can probably snag six gigahertz, assuming not all of the threads are locked. But again, it's quite hard to know what is actually true and what is being tested internally. Like for example, is that being tested with a ridiculously advanced cooling system, you know, and what have they actually done with that? What kind of tweaks have they made? Is this like ultra high quality silicon, like one in one million chips is gonna reach that quality? Or is it something like, you know, 
the average chip can probably do it if you start really messing around with voltage frequency curves, you know, voltage offsets and all of that stuff. And it's going to be very interesting, by the way, to see how overclocking works on uh, Ryzen, especially given some of the leaks from AMD, or not leaks, but some of the announcements from AMD themselves. And for example, memory overclocking is going to be very robust on Zen 4. And now just quickly... Uh, Grayman on Twitter is also stating that there's going to be many more SKUs featuring Vcash. Um, I think that this is pretty well established at this point. I've mentioned a couple of times myself, I have heard that the 7950 is going to receive it, as well as the, I think it was the 7800. Um, I'm trying to dig back through my own memory banks here. I forgot to make a note of it before the video because I'm professional. Um, but I think it was the basically the 16 core and the 8 core processors. I think it was the highest end ones are going to get Vcash variants. I'm uncertain whether the 7900 will get it. Um, there seems to be some indication here that it will. I don't think it's going to trickle down Vcash that is to 6 cores. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't see them doing it. As for pricing, this is not a leak, this is a guess. But I reckon you're probably going to be looking at like a thousand US dollars um, ish for the 7950 V core, uh, so V cash variant. Um, again, that is not a leak, that is just a guess. I don't think AMD can start charging, you know, like 1500 US dollars. That's not realistic. However, um, I don't think, just logically speaking, AMD will charge less, or at least significantly less, for Zen 4 than it will for Zen 3, you know, or, you know, you get what I meant. Um, and I think we can pretty much agree just through the extra manufacturing costs and the fact that ultimately speaking, these processors are going to be basically Halo products for the AM5 platform for the mainstream platform. So AMD can charge a bit of a premium. So I think like a, like 900, 1000, maybe even 1100 bucks is going to be kind of the price point we're looking at for the 7950 um, uh, V caches. But again, I could be wrong on that. We're going to be not waiting too long, I suspect, before we start to hear official announcements on this stuff. Also, um, one last thing in terms of announcements. I just want to throw this into this video. This is just a small thing, actually. Uh, there was those rumors that RTX 40 release dates um, could be as early as next month from a Chinese retailer. I can't remember the name of the retailer offhand, but it was doing the rounds on the internet. I actually reached out to a couple of Chinese retailers myself. And basically, I essentially... Uh, I won't mention the, 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 the retailers, so I don't want to get any, any, anyone in, spanked or anyone into trouble, but there's not much to say. Um, I reached out to a couple of fairly well-known ones and basically just said that I was going to be basically, you know, kind of in the area. What have you heard for RTX 40 launches? Um, I won't post the screenshots again because I do not want to get anyone into trouble because they're essentially talking about release dates that have not yet been made public but long story short they told me that there's no news yet for rtx 40 and rdna 3 but mostly i was inquiring against about the rtx 40 because there was the other retailer that said they had so you could take this as one of three things one the retailer was just you know bsing me they do know the date but they don't want to break embargo which is fair enough second the other retailer knows the date but these retailers have not been briefed on the date or the other retailer was wrong. I honestly don't know what it is. I'm just reporting it to you guys and you can make your own mind up. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. It's YouTube and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.